So this is a continuation of the parallel circuits lecture where we're going to take a look at what's called the current divider. I also want to talk to you about power as well because power is quite remarkable in a parallel circuit because it's also quite remarkable in a series circuit. More specifically, like I'll just tell you the whole thing. Like the formula for power in a series circuit is the same for the formula for power in a parallel circuit. And that's actually because it has to do with dissipation of energy. It's so cool. So we'll wait until we get there and I'll talk to you about that. But for now, I want to jump into the current divider rule. Now, first of all, I want you to think about the voltage divider rule. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to that last week and just check out the voltage, um, the video that I did on voltage and then buzz around until you see the voltage divider rule because I'm going to use the voltage divider rule more specifically I'm going to use the concept of the formula for the voltage divider rule in the current divider rule so if you understand the voltage divider rule you're good you'll get the current divider rule and then because you understand resistance really well because you watched the first part of this lecture you'll get why it's a little bit different okay let's move forward Let's just quickly take a look at this circuit. Now, this circuit is actually on the exam. It's almost exactly this circuit that's on the exam. There are two videos about this circuit. Watch them both. One is actually on Blackboard, and it's right here. And we can see that underneath the parallel lecture, we have this video here. This video discusses that circuit. It discusses how to select the fuse for that circuit. It discusses how to walk through the logic of this. It actually even talks about why we have a special switch here that in this case is a normally open push button switch for the brakes and the fact that it is kind of odd it's the first switch that we've seen that's after the power it's not before the power gets to the load it's actually after now all of these symbols here are the chassis ground because the actual chassis of the car is a big piece of metal and we use that as the negative that actually goes to the battery so you can watch that i'm not even going to go through this slide the only thing i'm going to say here is that we're creating more branches each one of these branches is a parallel circuit. Now, how many branches are here? Well, there's one here, right? Because there's like one fuse here, another fuse here, and then there's like a line coming off. So maybe one, two, three, four. Yeah, technically, as far as the actual resistors go, or more specifically the loads in this case, which are lamps, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parallel branches in this. Now, just because these are kind of wired together through one wire, doesn't mean that it's it's a whole branch on itself each one of these is seeing the 12 volts directly this is a 12 volt lamp 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 you get the picture all of them so each one is a branch so if a branch has 12 volts across it or if a load has 12 volts across it it is a branch in a uh, i'm going to say that differently because i am defining that a branch has to have 12 volts if a branch sees the source voltage, it is in parallel. doesn't matter what it is. Or if a load sees the source voltage, it is in parallel with the load and all of the other things in the load. So here we go. Here's an application about like in a home, which is pretty cool. So application of parallel circuit. The lamps in your home, although the plugs in your home, all of that is connected to 110 volts AC. Remember, a parallel circuit, every single thing sees the same voltage. And you know this, as you plug things in, in the home, if you plug a toaster in here and you plug a hairdryer in here and you plug some other thing in here, a fridge, at some point, it's going to be too much current because every time you plug something in, you increase the current and the fuse will glow, blow and glow and blow. But more specifically, in this case, this is a circuit breaker symbol and it will break the circuit. So there's an application there. Uh, single pole, single throw switch, turning the lights on and off. Here we go. Current divider rule. Welcome to the current divider rule. What's going on is that these parallel branches act in a way that they divide up the total current. So the total current is coming in here. It's being divided up amongst these two at this node. Okay, cool. So we don't know if they're dividing them equally or unequally. All we know is that those two are dividing up the, the current. So how do they divide them up? Well, remember in the in the um, when we were doing series circuits, the voltage divider rule indicated that we are dividing up the voltage, the two resistors or three or whatever. Let's just go with two. The two resistors are dividing up their voltage 
depending on their resistance. Well, in this case, it's actually the same. But we know that the voltage drop is greater the greater the resistance. Well, in this case, this is where things get a little backwards. The current is the greatest when the resistor is lowest. So if these two resistors are dividing up the current, the one that's actually lower is going to get more of the current and the one that's higher is going to get less. Although in the voltage divider, the resistor that had a higher value stole more of the voltage. So it's inverse. Just, just think about it this way. Like think series circuits, kind of your foundation, your understanding of Kirchhoff's laws, your understanding of like the voltage divider, everything, the, the formulas, and then take ser parallel circuits and just flip it all upside down. So moving forward, we're going to take a look at this. For two parallel elements of equal value, the current will be equal. I think that makes sense. For parallel elements with different values, the smaller one will draw more current and the larger one will draw less current. For parallel elements of different values, the current will split into a ratio of the inverse of the, the two resistors. Does that make sense? I mean, think about it. Like if it's less resistance, it gets more current. So it's backwards inverse actually and we will see that in the formula and i think that makes a lot of sense for example if one of two parallel resistors was twice the other then the current going through that larger resistor will be half like that just makes sense okay now let's take a look at this and let's oh, don't 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 see the answer yet okay here we go think about it okay we got 300 milliamps coming in here these two are dividing up that 300 milliamps this is less and that's greater well if 300 is being divided up and one of them is going to do more. Obviously, that's going to be greater and that's going to be less. But it's pretty cool. I've put some numbers in here that I think you can just kind of see what it is. This is more like feeling the numbers to understand. But in this case, take a, take a look. It's 200 milliamps and 100 milliamps. So I think that kind of is intuitive, right? It makes sense. Let's move forward and let's actually just see some of this in action and do some math. All right, here we go. So um, more examples here. Now let's let's kind of take a look at this. Now, we've got a 1,000 milliamps. This is the lowest value, so it's going to have the highest current. This is the highest value. It's going to have the lowest current. And what's it going to look like? It's going to look like this. Now, intuitively, what uh, that was the formula? You can't see, see it yet. Over here, we had this like 100 and 200, and then that got 200, and that got 100. So does that mean it's always like that? Not specifically. Just do the math to figure it out. Like, do the actual formulations to figure it out. But in this case, we can see that of 1000 milliamps that gets the most that gets less that gets less and that gets less so as far as you know this is 100 and that's 200 300 400 and that's a thousand whatever i mean don't don't try and figure it out too much just understand that the resistor with the lowest resistance will have the more of the current the more of the current yeah that's correct grammatically correct anyway it will have more of the current moving forward here is the cool rule okay so this is the current divider formula now look at it dude it's the exact same as the voltage divider formula except it's inverse it's upside down it's backwards so for the voltage divider formula the resistance was on the bottom the total resistance was on the bottom for the current divider formula it's on the top and that's because parallel circuits are just weird you know they do kind of opposite things right or you can actually look at it as though listen if i have lower resistance then I have higher current. So you can look at it that way and then that kind of is reverse. It's backwards to the voltage, however you want to look at it. Now I will unpack this formula so you can actually see the math and the physics that are going on here. So let's move on. Okay, good. So that's current divider formula. There you go. You have the unknown current, which is the, the current divided by the current going through resistor X right so rx you have the total current and uh you have the total resistance and the total current and you plug it in and press play and there you go so um let's take a look at an example here we go so now this is the example that we looked at on the board and it's intuitive but let's actually see why it kind of works like this now and, and you'll like this because 
this is where I unpack why the, where the formula works and, and why it works like this. Why we put the resistance on the top, the total resistance on the top. Bear with me. Here we go. So if I need the total resistance, I just do a formula here and I'm going to fill this out. I'm going to put these guys in parallel and uh, my answer is going to be 66.6666666. Dude, leave that in your calculator. Don't just put it in memory. Okay, I'm going to move forward now. Okay. Just put it in memory. Oh, I got excited there. Dude, you, you need to have that number in memory. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, good. So um, the reason is because you have to divide the total resistance. Actually, you don't really have to have it in memory because the next thing you're going to do is either multiply that by the current and or you're going to divide it by the resistance of the resistor you're looking at and then multiply that by current. So just don't make it leave your calculator. Leave it in there because you're just about, you're, the next step is for you to either divide or multiply that number. Okay, so always think like that so you can get the most accurate values out of your calculator. Now, here we go. So if I plug that in the formula, I'm going to say the total resistance divided by 100 ohms and then you are going to multiply that by the uh, the total current and then boom, you get the answer and the answer is 200 milliamps, just like we saw before. Now, this is where I want to tell you why the total resistance goes on top as far as like the math goes. Now, the total current is larger than any one of the individual currents. Okay, I'll say that differently. If you're looking for resistance, the current through resistor one, okay, it's going to be less than the total current. Does that make sense? I mean, I'll say that again. You have two resistors. They're dividing the current. So we know that the resistance that... The current going through either one resistor or the other is going to be less than the total. I mean, that makes sense, right? Okay, so if I wanted to have some formula that said, hey, I'm calculating some value, and it's always going to be less than the total resistance. Well, what you're doing is the total current, pardon me. What you're doing is you're taking this ratio of resistors, just like we did in the voltage divider. You're taking this resistance ratio, and you're multiplying it by the total current. Well, in this case, the total, the resistance ratio, well, actually, even in the voltage divider, that resistance ratio always is less than one. It's a value less than one. Hey, if the resistance ratio was a value greater than one, and I was multiplying it by the total current, so therefore, the current going through the resistor, say I'm finding the current through R1, is going to be greater than the current because it's going to be like whatever that resistance ratio is if it's greater than one it's really going to screw things up the resistance ratio always has to be less than one because we are dividing the total current so think about how you create a ratio that's less than one well you put the larger number on the bottom well and, and when we're doing series circuits the larger number is on the bottom because the total resistance in a series circuit is really big but the total resistance in a parallel circuit, parallel circuit, thank you, is really small. So we put that on the top. That's my thing. I'm going to stop that. Stop it. So what I'm saying here is that's how you remember where the resistance goes. Because, dude, these formulas, this formula, the current divider, the voltage divider, and we will see this form of formulas in many other things we do. You take the total value and you multiply it by some ratio of resistances. And then that gives you the output. That ratio has to be, in this case, we're dividing. That has to be less than zero. So whatever ratio you use has to be less than zero. You're always going to put the smaller value on the top and that's always going to be the total resistance because the total resistance is always less than any one of the resistors. What did I say? Yeah. The smaller number's got to be on the top, so therefore the total resistance has got to be on the top because you know the total resistance is always a value smaller than any one resistor. Okay, right. don't go anywhere. Don't, don't okay, bye. but don't go anywhere. Okay, one more, couple more things. Let's move forward. Okay, let's just move forward. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to plug some values in here, and I'm going to do this again for the 100 milliamps. And you know what? If you actually use that 6666666666 and you divide that by 100 and multiply it by 300, you will get exactly... Two zero zero. If you don't, you're not using a calculator, right? Okay, so let's move on here. And um, this is the current divider rules. Uh, when there are two parallel circuits, the current divider formula for those two parallel branches are, and this is it, and this is it. So, I mean, this is pretty simple here. It's just another way of looking at it. It's not actually simple, but it's another way of looking at it. 
Um, it's kind of like the uh, product over sum. So if you want, you can use this formula, but it only works for two. I always, always go with this formula. I always go with this. I mean, I like it because it's like taking the total and multiplying it by some ratio of resistance. But there's another one here if you have two and you can use that one. Either one, it's fine. Um, I don't really suggest this, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Okay, good. So uh, here we go. There's another way of looking at it. Are these guys in parallel? Are these guys in parallel? Well, you know what? They're certainly not in series. Okay, so they're in parallel. It's just another way of looking at the current. The current go, it's, it, it's going through, it's got a choice. It can go through one or the other. Well, that's parallel, right? So, um, and we can do the math here. We know that the total resistance here is gonna be less than 47, for sure, because it's 100 plus 47. And that value is, well, I, don't, I don't know what it is. It doesn't actually matter. But in this case, what I'm saying is to use this formula with only two resistors, you can do that if you wish. So that's enough about the current divider rule. I mean, I, you know, go practice it in the homework. Go practice it in the um, in the worksheets. It's pretty simple. There are a lot of examples there, and just just do it. It's just it's repetitious, but just get it in your head. Just get get the formula in understanding of how to do that. But more so, think about what you're doing when you're doing it. That you're dividing these things. This is I get. Uh, hold on a second, mother. I'm doing a video lecture. Can I call you back? Oh, there you go. Mother's very good. Um, okay, let's get into power. All right, power. Here we go. So, welcome to power. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. So, what the, the really, it's a really complicated formula, dude. Because it's really complicated. The total power in a series and a parallel circuit is just the power in one resistor plus the power in the other resistor plus the power in the other resistor plus the power in the. No, 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 no. It's that simple. Listen, I, let me, I, I got a little circuit here. The total resistance of the circuit, the total current of the circuit, the total current through R1, the total voltage across R1, the total power in the circuit. So what we've done is we want to find out all of these things. But before I even go through steps two, three, four, and five, I want to just stop on the power and look at this one circuit. Now, if you think about it, power is when we boil it down, the very first thing I talked to you guys about power was uh, power is the dissipation of energy. That's it. So in this case, it's it's the it's the using of energy. It's the transferring of energy of one thing to another thing. In this case, um, those resistors are creating heat, so they're generating heat energy. So what's going on there is that um, each one is generating heat. Okay. So does it matter if they're in series or in parallel? I mean, if I knew the power for each one, I mean we know that. The, different currents going through them because they're in series and when they're in series the current's the same but the voltage is different so does that make a difference well it does obviously in the bigger picture but let's look at each individual let's just say we use ohm's law and kirchhoff's law and we did all that stuff and we actually calculated the power in every single resistor so i'm not saying i know the voltage drop i'm not saying i know the current i'm not saying i even know the value of the resistor i'm not saying that i'm just saying hey i know the power of the resistor and I know the power of the other resistor. And the power of the other resistor. So I have all of these resistors. It doesn't matter if they're in series or parallel. They're all creating heat. If I know their power, I can say, this is how many joules they're dissipating per unit time. Or joules per second. So, in that case, the formula is just the same. Total power is power in resistor 1 plus power in resistor 2. I'm going to say load 1 and load 2. Because these could all be motors or solenoids or, or heaters or light bulbs. or doesn't matter what they are. So, But they're all doing some work. So we just add it all up. And there you go. Now, that's actually really powerful. Because when, it, when we get into series parallel circuits, we're going to use the idea of power to bridge the two circuits to help us find some gaps. It's, it's actually a very powerful tool because as you know, when you're using a series circuit, you have to apply Kirchhoff's laws in a first series circuit and Ohm's law. You have to apply Ohm's law, Ohm's law according to Kirchhoff's law. And it's different when you do parallel circuit because Kirchhoff's rules for a parallel circuit are different. So what if there are some gaps and you have like this parallel series circuits there's like a bunch of the two and there are the gaps and you're like, what, what am I, what, how do I apply the, just chill. If you know the power or if you can calculate the power in different kind of areas, it's great. Cause then you can like kind of bridge that gap 
between Kirchhoff's rules. It's really awesome. So let's just go through this and, and it's kind of like an overview of what we're doing and we'll just jump through this. We're gonna find the total resistance of the circuit and we're gonna plug it into uh, the formula. And, uh, oh, did I not do that? Oh no, oh no, no, I'm not gonna do it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, let's go to the summary. We're almost done. Dude, you know what? I don't know. I thought maybe I had these, these answers here, but let's just do them in our head. Okay, here the total resistance, it's gonna be less than one kilo ohm. So let me just ballpark this. No, it's gonna be less than 560. So um, that's twi twice as much as this. That's twice as much as that. So a third something, five, it's gonna go half maybe. I don't know, like somewhere like around uh, 472. Really? Let's do that. Okay, bracket, 560, inverse. Plus, and I'm just going to go 1,000. 1,000 inverse plus, now I'm going to go 2,200. Bracket inverse. Okay, so that's what I typed in, if you can see that. Okay, so that's what I typed in. So, and I'm going to just hit enter, and it's 300. 308? 308.6. That's totally off. So, um, yeah, so 308.6, uh, there you go. That's the total resistance of the circuit. And the total current through the circuit, that's easy. I take the total voltage, which is actually called the voltage source. Huh? And I divide that by the total resistance, and then I have the total current. I'm using Ohm's law. Okay, good. Uh, the current through each resistor of the branch. Well, I know the voltage for each one, so I can just use Ohm's law, and I can say, well, the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So 20 divided by 1,000, there you go, 20 milliamps. And then uh, just continue on. Each one is just divided. The voltage across R2, it's just a stupid question. Okay, let's move on. But you know the answer, right? <clears throat> it's 20 volts. Look at that. Don't go anywhere. Um, here we go. So now I want to talk about open circuits because we did talk about open uh, circuits in um, series circuits. And I also want to talk about like what it means to short a circuit in parallel. And uh, let's just go through that. So in open branches, watch this. Now this is important because this is on the midterm exam. So like just wrap your head around this. And you know what? It, this is not a difficult concept. It's just you stopping, pausing, and thinking about what I'm saying. And just understanding what you've learned so far and applying it here. Now watch this. If I have this closed switch closed, if it's closed, the current in this case is greater because both resistors are part of the circuit, right? So if I open this switch, then the only part of the circuit that's actually doing anything, any drawing any current is R2. So the total current goes down for sure because there's only one resistor in the circuit that's actually you know drawing or doing any work, drawing any current because one of the switches is open. It's like turning two light bulbs on in parallel. Obviously, they're both gonna draw more current. If you turn one off, and there's less current going through the total circuit. So in this case, if I open the switch, there's less current, total current, current coming out of the power source. If I close the switch, then there's more current. So now what would happen if, get this, so that, that's an open branch, okay? So uh, when parallel resistors are open, IT is always less than the normal value. When a parallel resistor opens, IT is always less. So it opens up, the current goes down, for sure because you're taking away one of the loads that's drawing the current. Okay, once IT and the voltage across the branches are known, a few calculations will determine the open resistor when all of the resistors are of different values. Okay, so what does that mean? I don't know. Okay, let's, once IT and the voltage across the branches are known, okay, so if I knew the total current, IT, and I knew the voltage across the branches, which is all the same, right? So what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to say, oh, okay, well then I know the total resistance. Now, if I were to say, if I knew the resistance of say only one of them, I could calculate the resistance of the other. Actually, it's really complicated to isolate one of the R's in that complicated resistance formula. So you can just use Ohm's law because you know the total current. If you wanted, um, you could use the voltage divider rule and you could then uh, isolate for R1. You could, because if, if you knew RT, yeah, you could calculate RT for sure, because you know the total current and you know the total resistance, uh, the total uh, voltage, which is the voltage source. So you could calculate RT just by using Ohm's law. Now you have RT, you have IT, and you have one of the resistors and not the other. So you could do that unknown. And you could say, well, what is this? 
if you knew the current through it. And you would know the current through it using Kirchhoff's current law because you know the total current and you know the resistance, the resistance of one of the resistors. So then you can actually just say, well, then I can find the current through that resistor and then you can find the current through the other resistor. Oh yeah, you can even use Ohm's law. Now, you know what? I just said a whole bunch of things like blah, 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 blah. You know what? If you want, go over it and stop and pause and just go, what did you just say? But don't do it. Just, you know what? Draw it. Draw a circuit like this, okay? And uh, let's just say you knew the voltage. Okay, do, do this. This is a good example, okay? Just do this on your own. You know the voltage. You know the resistance of this, but you don't know the resistance of this. And you know the total current. Just make something up, okay? Actually, go back to this. Go back to this example here that you you have some values that you do know and pretend you don't know that's 100 ohms, okay? So I'm going back to this circuit. So let's just say this was whatever. That, that was 200 and that was 100 because the other one was like that. And uh, you knew the voltage and you know, to, know the total, total current. Try and use all, use the current divided rule. Use Kirchhoff's current law for a, ser a parallel circuit where we know the two branches add up to the total. Um, and use Ohm's law and look at it all different kinds of ways to calculate the um, that last resistor. The, other th the last thing you can do actually, and this is pretty cool, you can use the power formula. If I knew the total resistance, pardon me, if I know the total current and I know the total uh, voltage, which say we do, you can calculate the total power. It's just the two multiplied by each other. Now, if you knew the total um, voltage, you know the total current, and you knew the total power, you could calculate the power going through this resistor, right? Through Ohm's law. Sorry, not the power going through. I just lied to you. The power of this resistor, because you know its voltage, you know the voltage drop across this, and you know its, its value. So you could calculate its power. Right, because there's like a formula for that. Power is V squared, and then there's like an R in there somewhere. It's either under or beside it. Yeah, figure that out. It's actually underneath. Okay, bye. So let's, don't go anywhere, wait. So um, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use the fire form, power formula to calculate the power in that resistor. You know the total power, and then you can simply and easily just say, well, the other third resistor is the total minus the power through R1, and you know the power there. You know the power here. And then you know the voltage across that is gonna be the source voltage, and then you can rearrange the power formula for resistance and voltage, and to isolate for resistance, and you can get that resistor. There are so many different ways to do it. So it's fun to play around with all of that. Um, now, the last thing I wanna do before I let you go is I wanna postulate a closed branch in a parallel circuit. Or more specifically, I need you to postulate a closed branch in a parallel circuit. Now, I really, I don't want to tell you the answer because I need you guys to think about this. Okay, a branch, right, is just like, you know, something that's drawing current and its voltage, the voltage across any one branch has to be the source voltage and then it's, a, then it's considered a branch. Right, now think about this. If I were to short a resistor, let's say I got these two resistors here. Okay, I've got this resistor and this resistor. They're in parallel. I'm going to short this resistor. I'm going to put a wire from here to there. Okay, so that branch, that creates a new branch. Think about it. The voltage from this side of the resistor to that side of the resistor is equal to this value. If I were to, like, let's just, let's just actually bring another branch out here. I'm going to bring a wire out here. I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to go over to here. Okay, so it's a brand new branch. It's actually shorting that resistor. None of the current is going to go through that resistor. It's going to like go like, forget it. I'm not going through you. I get this branch to skip around you that has no resistance. It's a wire. Well, it has very little resistance. But we say it has no. Okay, good. So um, <clears throat> what's going to happen? Can we figure it out? Just a little hint there. Just a little hint. The total resistance of a parallel circuit is always less than the lowest resistor. Okay, I'm gonna move forward. So, um, by the way, <clears throat> that whole thing, like there's a question like that on the exam. 
just think about it. Um, there you go. So uh, I went through this, <coughs> and I can say, here we go. So in summary, resistors in parallel are connected across the same two nodes in a circuit. Right. They're they're accessing the voltage source. A parallel circuit provides more than one path for current. It does. It does. At least more than one. Right? If you have two, then you've got a parallel circuit. The number of circuit paths equals the number of resistors in parallel. Now, I'm going to re-say that. The number of circuit paths equals the number of loads in parallel. Yeah, not just resistors, but loads. Motors, lights, buzzers, solenoids, heaters, whatever they are. The total parallel resistance is always less than the lowest value of the parallel resistor. And that is the answer to that question I asked you previously about what would happen if I shorted that. Okay, so um, there you go. And thank you for watching. And um, now you guys are experts at parallel circuits. You're good to tackle the homework. Go at it. Um, and then there is um, there's a review there on the uh, exam. And go through it. And you guys will be good. And that's all. And oh, goodbye.